What does discipleship, what does discipleship practically look like in the local church? How are the elders to model discipleship specifically with the individual members of their congregation? Is the Jesus with his disciples or the Paul-Timothy relationship? Um, are they a practical model of life-on-life life practical discipleship? Well, that, that's something that we've worked a lot on. You have to remember the Great Commission is to go make disciples, and how do you do that? By teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. So discipleship is simply the process of teaching. The Greek word is mathetes, and it means learner. So I, I, sometimes I think we assume that discipleship is primarily just the, the mentoring, practical side. It's, it's really passing on divine truth because people live and make decisions based on convictions. There's a process with the truth. At first, um, you understand it. Then you believe it. Then it takes over your life because it becomes a conviction. And then the next step would be affection. For, for new believers, first comes understanding, and then comes belief, and then you want to get to the point of conviction, and then you want them to mature to the point of affection. So full discipleship would be where you love the truth, where you have passed down the love of the truth. And I, I think discipleship then at its primary heart is content-based. It's based on passing the truth of the Word of God, the living and abiding Word of God to someone else. And we tell our people, find somebody who knows more than you do and learn from them. Find somebody who knows less than you do and teach them what you know. Everybody should be in the flow of passing on the truth. Uh, and so as a church, you know, we would find every conceivable way to put people together in, in every kind of group there is, there is with that as the goal all the time, no matter what the group definition is might be a home Bible study, might be a, a fellowship group, a Sunday school class, it might be a men's group, a women's group. It's always geared around making the Word of God clear, passing the Word of God down so that it becomes the, the truth that eventually becomes their conviction and their love. And um, the other thing about discipleship is sometimes you can do it without personal contact. I have to believe as a, as a pastor that I have discipled many people that I've never met. Um, <laughs> we, were, we were up in Oklahoma City eating at, a, at the stockyards. Some guy took us to a cattleman's steakhouse. It's one of those, you know, highfalutin places where the steaks are seven ninety five. <laughs> and um, this waiter's waiting on us. He's a big, burly, oaky guy. And, and he heard the, the man who had taken us there, pastor, refer to me as MacArthur. And he said, are you John MacArthur? And I said, yes, yeah, I am. No, what am I, what am I doing in this hokey steakhouse <laughs> in Oklahoma? Anyway, long story short, um, his name is Billy Jack. <laughs> and Billy Jack was so overwhelmed because he came to Christ listening to me preach. And he told me, 27 years an alcoholic, and then he's been saved, and he's had no desire for that. He only desires the Word. And, and then he said, could I hug you? <laughs> and I'm sitting down in this sunken booth, you know. And he pounced and hugged me. And I thought to myself, this small, encouraging, sweet providence had nothing to do with me owing him, knowing him at all, but it did have to do with me passing the truth on to him so that he felt a life connection to me. Um, so it's about the truth, and it's about doing everything you can to put the truth in someone's life and it's even more powerful and effective if you do know them personally because you can undergird the truth with how you live. 
And so it happens, it happens when you're not around through the mechanism of the media, but it happens with an even greater intensity when you are life on life. Would you join me in, welcome, in thanking our panelists this afternoon? Thank you.